And there was another person who then turned around and said, why would you be speaking that language? It's a dead language. It has no place in modern Ireland. This is, I, I, like, this is obviously in English, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I've been panicking this whole time, so <laughs> This is Fresh Perspectives, a show where we get new perspectives on the social issues that affect modern society. Our contributors will play a game where they pick out a statement. If they agree, they will walk to the agree side and state their reasons why. If they disagree, they will walk to the disagree side and state the reasons why. This is all in order to unify across the different perspectives. It should be mandatory to learn Irish in school. I don't think that Irish should be mandatory in school, or certainly not in the way that it was taught to me. I felt that the Irish language subject that I was taught was trying to half-house it between trying to satisfy the requirements of native speakers and also people who are not native in the language. And for me, it didn't succeed in trying to get that balance. Mm. Irish as a subject should be used as the subject for decolonization and not, not only to teach a language. Yeah, and I totally recognise what you're saying there, Cuivi, and I know I have my biases as well, because I did what I was taught through, you know, man the Welga throughout from primary to secondary. But I totally agree that we should teach it in a way that's decolonising the mind, because for me, that's what made me more passionate about Irish in my final year. I just see Irish kind of disappearing more and more if it wasn't mandatory in schools. I think it just needs to be taught in a different way. I agree with a lot of what you said. I think you do need to have a bigger conversation about education in Ireland in general, where, I mean, you go into secondary school and you pick subjects to uh, essentially to get you into college. And it's more about failing really than passing. It's, I can't fail this. I need to, there's loads of people, I guess, who go into school and, you know, would be great at maths and are passionate about it, but to study for an exam to pass, aren't necessarily able to do that. And then they end up hating maths or there's people who would love to do art, but can't do it well enough maybe to get an A and then they can't get into college. So, you know, they don't do art and they don't, don't get a chance to maybe express themselves in that way. So, I mean, maybe we could talk a bit more about going to school to learn things rather than to pass exams. You know, when you're young, it's much easier to learn a language. So if it weren't mandatory, maybe some people wouldn't have the chance to learn Irish. But yeah, I think there should be more emphasis on conversation and what matters to people. So maybe some grammar, but not too much. But I do agree also uh, with you. Uh, Kevin or Quivin, uh, <laughs> Irish should be taught um, in conjunction with decolonization and I personally, I've, um, I've learned it through folklore, so there is much of that uh, already, but I know that not everybody has that experience. I think that's where I fall in the middle of the two. We should have a compulsory element to Antiago Reilge, the Irish language being taught in school, but not in the way it's being taught. And in a way that the whole education system, especially the Leaving Cert, is a memory test. So you learn all this off and you'll get your A. When you learn most of it off, you get your B, or your H's, now I should, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did those. But for me, we should have a compulsory spoken Irish subject. And I think if they were to do it right, they'd have an option subject where you can do your literature, you can do your poetry, your prose, and a more of a heavy emphasis on written grammar. But I'd have extra points for that, because that's, it's a very difficult task for anyone to undertake. Okay, that makes sense. I was taught Irish well in school. You know, in the Gwell school, it was Orch Kaidan. There was a lot of emphasis on the grammar. And, you know, a lot of us, you know, the way a lot of people do have to kind of learn off essays and stuff for the Leaving Cert. 
I, that was not our experience really. You know, we were able to construct an essay ourselves using, you know, our own thoughts and all that kind of stuff, make it creative. I had the same experience as you, like uh, going to an all-Irish school. I don't really remember not being able to speak Irish because you're just kind of brought into it so quickly. All these um, essays and poetry that you read, you can like give your own opinion rather than being forced to memorize a bunch of stuff. Well, for me personally, I started learning Irish after secondary school. So there was more emphasis on conversation and getting your message across. So I did sound grammar as well. but. I did come across lots of Irish people who came back to Irish when they were older and they said they, they had ba a bad experience of Irish uh, at school. Actually, similarly enough, in the last years of primary school, I had a very good teacher in Irish who just broke down the language at that level very well mm -hmm. and made it accessible in a way that it hadn't been before yeah. because for the first couple of years of secondary school for me I used to fail Irish. Either a fail or a very low D. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not everyone shared my experience in, in seeing their teachers with passion for the language mm -hmm. and being able to, to give that passion to others because I know people who struggled through higher level mm -hmm. Irish. They might have loved the, the language going into it but it was, it was such a slog that yeah they really didn't when they got out because it was, it was so regimented, it was so strict, it was this, 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 get your A, leave school. Yeah. <laughs> you know? There definitely needs to be some enthusiasm injected into the education system in yeah. general, and especially Irish, I think, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. The Irish language is perceived differently by youth. An enthusiasm towards the language that it hasn't been absent, but certainly hasn't been visible in older generations. I remember during the pandemic seeing the huge explosion of Irish language social media. Oh, big time. It's really encouraging to see people engaging with it on, on such a modern level. I think it's just reminding people that and maybe we as young people do have a duty as well to kind of show people in the Gweltuk as well, like this is Irish also, you know, outside the Gweltuk, you know, it's also alive outside the Gweltuk and you can use it in any way. My view on, on how young people interact with language is, it's, it's a reclamation of the language, it's, it's finding ways to use it in the modern world. And like, there are so many young people in Ireland, we're making Gweltuk sexy again, like there are so many people who are using it in cool, fun, engaging ways, a lot through social media and stuff. Like new age slam poets, ask Gael, like Kieran EA is one yeah, of just yeah. my heroes. She's just so cool and everything she does is just amazing. And things like that, like it's people, young people in Ireland today are finding ways to make our heritage and our tradition a modern, cool, sexy language. Cool, I was talking to a few Irish language activists from Belfast, from Queen's University. They had like, um, Queen's actually used to have like uh, both languages signage, you know, across the university and then it was removed. And so they have a campaign around uh, Irish language, well, not just at the university in Northern Ireland in general, over Ochnagelga and Irish language rights and that sort of thing. So I guess like part of it is just people reclaiming the language, but also, I mean, there's a huge social movement to be made of it. As you guys said, you know, we don't have all those rights here. There's many things that we could be fighting it's great that young people are using Irish in new ways like in social media and, and so on. But um, I was reading about the census of 2016 and it's like almost 2 million people know Irish but only like 70,000 speak it on a daily basis so I was wondering if there are any ways to encourage people to speak it more you know, on a daily basis. The Irish language is dying. Obviously, I disagree with this, and every time I see this popping up, you know, online or in conversation, I'm just like, are these people asleep? And I don't mean that in an insulting way, but they actually must be asleep because. Hello, we have Gwell Skullina. 
We have people in public office speaking Irish. We have so many Gaelic. We're about two million, I think, speak Irish, even if it's Cúpla Fúcal or whatever it is. It might be a minority language, but it is living, and people are making their best effort to keep it alive. So I think that needs to be really acknowledged in this country. For me, that statement is colonial violence. I'm going to give a very quick example of like how it can be violent is that uh, there was one event where I was facilitating a youth group and there was so a girl from like Lor Lor Honamara, she was like from Outer Minzron, came into this youth group and simply said, yes, she's like from the Gwethod, Irish is her mother tongue. And there was another person who then turned around and said, why would you be speaking that language? It's a dead language. It has no place in modern Ireland. That girl simply went mute. She wasn't able to speak at that meeting beyond that point, and then never came to another session. One important thing to bring up, like, is imperialism and colonialism, that sort of thing. There's uh, this quote by James Connolly that I'm going to butcher, but, like, he talks <laughs> about how, you know, you can get rid of the English army and put like a green flag over Dublin, but it doesn't really change anything unless you're going to like properly change how things work. It's essentially put out as you should learn Irish because, you know, because of nationalism. You should learn it because you should, because you're from Ireland, that sort of thing. Whereas I think our attitude, the attitude of young people, uh, a lot of people I know who know Irish is not that. They, you know, it's their language, it belongs to them. To an extent it is about anti-imperialism and decolonialism. There's a lot for us still to do. I guess we've been left with a lot to, to work with. I mean, even when it comes to like partition and stuff like that. The way I always challenge this question, when people say Irish is a dead language or a dying language, is what do you actually mean by that? Because that statement is one that's thrown around well, probably not every day, but you know what I mean? <laughs> we've all heard it before, especially as Gael Gore, we've heard it before, but growing up, you'd always hear Irish is a dead slash dying language. Mm -hmm. But what do you mean? Yeah. What does that actually mean? Does it mean there's three people left who speak it, and once they're gone, they're gone? And I think, again... Which is false. Which is false. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's one, two, three. <laughs> but there are hundreds and thousands of people who speak Irish yeah. every single day and that number is going up. And as we've said already, young people are breathing new life into the language and mm -hmm. dragging it, kicking and screaming into the 21st century. So Irish is absolutely not a dying language. It is alive and well. I think it's it just amazing that um, Irish is dying because there are people learning it, not just in Ireland, but abroad as well. And also now, finally, the Irish language is used more by VU as well. Now, the Irish has been an official language in VU since 2007, but only from the end of last year, all uh, documents uh, have to be translated into Irish and all the EU sites also have to be translated into Irish. So I think it's, it's a great time for Irish. There is a lot of op. It's not, it's not a dying language, no. Throw that in the way. <laughs> <laughs>